I think this thing looks so much sexier with this intercooler. Especially because we didn't do like any weird cutouts. We just put it in there like OEM. It looks super buff. This morning we put those T's in that we were talking about last night for the boost gauges. So the boost gauge is working now. We installed the T's. We did, what else we do this morning? We did an oil change. We got some fresh liquid molly in there. We're a little late. We're a, we're a lot late for the dyno, but whatever. Got some fresh 94. We're good to go, baby. You got a quarter tank of 94. Gas is $1.62 for regular. If anybody that's in the cars was thinking, oh, I'm gonna move to BC, don't do it. Gas is so stupid here. So stupid. $40, got Emerson a quarter tank of 94. That's bullshit. Oh, hey, I, uh, I heard you were late for the dyno. Let me just, let me just give you a quick, quick traffic jam for you. You want the 250 special? Or you want the good old, just like six, 700 horsepower? So when we were messing around with it this morning, we actually forgot to tighten one of the battery grounds and Emerson said he forgot to tighten one of the charge pipes. So they just got up in the dyno right now. We're gonna have to take a couple minutes and tighten everything that we forgot to tighten up so that we can get it ready to go. Are you nervous? Oh, yeah. Dude, I remember, is this your first car that's ever been on the dyno? Yep. If it lives, can we? Put a straight pipe like that on it because that's that's super dope no we live in california i wish we lived in california bro we can run that that's some good meat last night when i put the bumper on i didn't put very many of these bolts back in because we're not going to be keeping it on for long <laughs> look how stupid it looks oh it's so janky right now what's your bet what do you think it's gonna do two 254 254 yeah oh See, it depends on how far we let him push it. We told him to, we're like, yo, if you need to push it a little bit to get some bigger numbers, that's fine, push it a little bit. I'm saying you could easily push 275. You have a really old, tired motor, so maybe I'd say about 275. Whatever you guys think it's gonna make, comment down below right now before we get to that point in the video. I wanna see who got closer. And do not cheat and comment when you find out the numbers at the end. Comment right now. Not even the right plug. You wanna run BKR 70 yet? That's how yeah, that's how Bridge is running. You thought you got better plugs, but you got the stockies. Good job, bro. We threw in the proper plugs. They're a step colder, which is good. That's what we needed. Seems to be running a little bit better now. Now we can adjust the tune. Keep going with this. Exhaust is just from all the times we've started and stopped it and flooded it and everything. It's finally clearing it out, dude. It feels so good to have this thing finally kicking again. <laughs> He's not even going. That's just like light, light pull. Done that yet, dude? That scared the crap out of me. So that last run, we hit 216 horsepower, 235 torque, and that's at 10 pounds of boost. And he said, for this old ass motor, that's kind of where he'd be comfortable leaving it. But me and Emerson were like, no. I've seen people with stock KAs push like 260, so we gave him the green light to just send it a little bit harder, like, a couple more pounds of boost. Like, 216 is just not enough. Well, it's just not enough. Ah, the torque is just, woo! The torque is good. The torque like doubled itself. Okay, here we go. Please, baby, don't die. <laughs> yeah! 
Yes. <laughs> I told you we could do it, boy. I actually did like 270 on the previous one, and I had let off because nothing so much. Oh, really? 260, dude. That's exactly where we wanted to be. I overshot it a little bit. I was saying 275. Said two. Really safe, 216. Less safe, 260. Oh, your exhaust was this close to the ground. Get in, boy. <laughs> That's way better than it used to be. Compared to like the stock KA, that's a big difference. I think he left. I think he dipped out the window behind you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was fucking <laughs> big. <laughs> So we all went for a little drive just to make sure everything was good before we dipped out of here and, and it shit the bed. So a huge shout out to Racing Greed. Thank you guys for helping us out. We will be back here in a couple weeks to hopefully get the Civic tuned. Now we just gotta do a couple street pulls, boy. So happy for you, bro. This car's been out of commission for so long. I'm still driving. Give me a good, give me a good little fist bump. I think it's the world's fastest car, but it is fun. This is a fun car. Try and get some flybys right now so you guys can hear how good this turbo sounds. <laughs> it sounds so good. <laughs> he set off the alarm. Listen, this is your fault. I gotta stand here now like an idiot filming myself while you drive away. What is it like? What's different? Like something fell off. Oh, you heard it? Yeah. Already out here breaking shit. Apparently, he heard an exhaust bolt fall off while he was just driving. <laughs> we bought Loctite specifically to Loctite those studs in. That's what fell out down the road there. Can't see it because it gets too dark, but there's studs right here that hold Ooh. the turbo to the manifold, and that one over here fell out apparently we were at, we were like right by the shop because we were getting morgan and the place beside the shop is like a german like mechanics place so they actually gave us some studs and nuts and bolts and everything that we're going to need um pretty much it looks like the stuff that isr included it was it, it's probably half our fault for not torquing it down properly but the Garbage. stuff that isr included they weren't proper locking nuts like once we started taking it apart and this guy was looking at them he's like dude these aren't like like to thread a stud into a turbo and then put a nut on it, they're not the proper nuts. They don't they don't lock. There's nothing on there that'll keep them from backing off, especially when they get really hot. So he gave us the right hardware. It's, we're just gonna limp home right now, not limp, but we're just gonna drive home right now and not boost too hard and then switch it up when we get home. So it's no big deal. We just literally have to take the bolts out, put new bolts in, but that'll probably be all we do for today. I hope you guys are stoked on the numbers for the 240. I'm really hungry. We'll go home, I'll make you food. Okay, let's go, let's go. Anyways, we have some more stuff we gotta do today. I gotta edit some videos for you guys. So, and it's pouring rain, so we can't really do any more pulls safely right now. So that's all we're gonna have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and stay committed. And thank you for everybody who prayed for the 240 to live through the dyno because it made it. And it's thanks to you guys. Okay, peace out. Everybody that noticed the car was burning a lot of oil in the dyno what happened was the oil drain was coming down out of the car and then it was kind of going like back up and then into the oil pan for some reason we didn't directly link it to the oil pan so what's happening is like too much pressure is coming down and building up and it's not flowing nicely into the oil pan and it's like burning oil inside the turbo because it's not flowing we took it home to put the new bolts in that we said we got at the end of the video 
we realized that that was the problem. So we just snipped the drain line a little bit and shortened it up so that won't happen again. It's nothing major. It was literally just the drain. Me and Emerson went and took it for a drive last night and it's perfectly fine. So that's what it was. Don't worry yourselves. The 240 is in great shape. I hope you guys are stoked. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.